Hi, I'm Dave. I'm here in the sound room, and it's time for another YouTube video. This how-to video focuses on using a digital audio workstation, or DAW, comprised of a portable audio recorder along with a PC to record, edit, and create a finished product. We are going to work with multiple audio tracks. This example will include a pre-recorded backing track that will be downloaded from the internet but it could also be a track that you have created or borrowed from somewhere else. We will be combining this track with personal recordings using an overdubbing technique. There are a number of different ways to go about this. Here's one way. We will be using a PC, a portable audio recorder, and headphones. Start by finding a backing track of a song that you would like to work on. A web search for backing tracks will give plenty of results. Another source for this is a karaoke track. For example, search YouTube for Amazing Grace Karaoke and you will find a number of versions of this popular song. Let's use Freeware to download the backing track. 4K offers a YouTube to MP3 downloader. 4K also has a combination audio and video downloader that can be handy if your music editing software supports a video track. Video lyrics or cues can be helpful when playing along with the track, especially if the audio track has no lead instrument or vocals. To download the audio track, run the MP3 downloader. Copy the song's YouTube address, then click Paste Link on the 4K window. The audio track will be downloaded to your PC. Now that we have our backing track, let's open it with a music editor. I'll be using Sony Acid Music Studio. Audacity is another software option. It's popular and completely free. Reaper is a simple commercial editor that's free to try for 60 days. The basic function of these music editors is similar. They let you open or record multiple audio tracks and edit things like length, speed, pitch, and volume. The tracks can be cut and pieced together or layered on top of each other. Most editors allow you to apply filters for things like cutting hiss and also to add effects like reverberation. The tracks can be combined or converted to different music file types. Run your favorite audio editing software and import or open the backing track into track number one position. Use headphones to listen to the track while you play or sing along. To record this personal track, we will be using a portable audio recorder. There are a number of suitable recorders made by Zoom and Tascam, for example. I will be using this Zoom H4N Pro recorder. This one is capable of overdubbing and recording independent multiple tracks using remote mics. It can also function as an interface for direct recording and mixing at the PC, but I will be using basic single track recording common to all portable recorders. Start by placing your recorder or microphone about one foot away from your instrument. Enter your recorder's pre-record mode and set the audio input levels. For the H4N, this means switching the device on, then pushing the record button once. While playing the piece, we want the meter to go to about the 80% level and never go into the red zone. The H4N Pro will start recording when the record button is pressed a second time. Pressing stop will stop the recording and automatically save the file to whatever folder has been selected. It's a good idea to record the tracks for each song into its own folder. Make at least one test recording. If your PC is particularly noisy, you may need to guard your recording from it. This can be done by simply keeping distance using a headphone extension. Anyway, run your favorite audio editing software and place this karaoke track or backing track into position number one. 
Then import or open your personal recording from the portable recorder or its memory card to position number 2. Now you can play track 1 and pause it at the position for beginning to play your personal track. Use your ears to line up the two tracks into proper synchronization. You don't have to focus on the start of a song. Once the tracks are synchronized, listen to the mix and edit the tracks for things like volume and effects. You can record and add as many tracks as your software allows, play harmony, switch instruments, add vocals, etc. This layering method allows you to record several takes until you get something worthy of mixing. When you're happy with your final mix of tracks for this song, render them into a single CD quality WAV file. Repeat this process for each song that you want to publish to the web or burn to a CD. Another important step is to normalize your collection of finished WAV files so that they have equal volume. This can be done during your final mix or just prior to publishing or burning. You don't want your listeners to have to adjust the volume for each song. CD Burner XP is freeware that will allow you to burn your WAV files to a CD and add CD text. The text will appear on most players that will display the title of the disc, name of each track, and the artist. Just drag and drop your WAV file into CD Burner, add CD text, and burn the disc. Here are a few final notes. I also like recording to the H4N while playing through my own mic, amplifier, and effects pedal because I'm used to setting up for a particular sound that I'm after. Another good option is to use the H4N Pro multiple track setting. This allows multiple microphones to record the separate tracks simultaneously. Another option is to place the mic or recorder in a box lined with foam. It can be tricky to match the sounds from different recording spaces. Mixing and editing audio is somewhat of an art, similar to editing video or images. Beauty is in the eyes or ears of the beholder. A person could go crazy trying to achieve some form of perfection, but it's fairly simple to produce reasonable quality.